Mike's World, Tubular. Yeah, yeah, you heard it. This is Mike's World, giving Mike's opinion, Mike's ways, Mike's everything. Agree or disagree, this is Mike's World. Hey, everybody, this is another episode of Mike's World. Well, not so much episode as just a little quick, uh, Little quick one to make you smile, make you laugh, make uh, flex your brain a little bit here. Got a funny story, true story, that happened to me. I want to go ahead and share it with you guys. It's one of the more funnier stories in my life, as I've said in a few of my other videos. Got a bunch of stuff that happened in my life. You know, some of it funny, some of it not, some of it tragic, some of it hilarious. Been through very many things. So this is a little comedy uh, skit that happened in my life that I wanted to uh, tell you guys about. Now, after I left California at a very young age, we had moved to Albuquerque, New Mexico. We had moved to New Mexico. We had bought some rural land in a little place outside New Mexico. You guys can look it up, called Cuba. Outside. Uh, called Cuba, New Mexico. Very rural. About 100 miles from anything. It's a two gas station. Uh, very small. Two gas station town. One grocery store type, you know population of probably two three thousand people very small we, we, we own up we, we bought a bunch of land over there we bought about uh, 20 acres beautiful right in a, in a canyon in a canyon and then we own the cliff side you go up in the canyon and there's a, a cliff side it's got about 300 foot drop beautiful cliff side where you can overlooks the whole village and everything really high up about 350 foot cliff uh, beautiful land. My dad knew it was very beautiful. That's why he purchased it when we came from California. Uh, so, uh, we purchased some land over there. Actually lived there for a few years. Then we'd actually moved farther north. Sort of by uh, northern New Mexico, southern Colorado. Four Corners. If anyone knows anything about the, the Four Corners, it's where Utah, Arizona... Nevada, I mean, I'm sorry, not Nevada, Colorado and New Mexico meet right in that area. But we would always go back to the land because we have a night, I had a little home there in the canyon and uh, we own the land. So we would always go back over there and visit and camp and have a good time, you know. So uh, one time we decide we're going to go over there. I'm taking a friend with me. I'm about. I want to say 14 years old, 13, 14 years old, to get away from a little bit more of the populated area that we were in, you know, we decided we were going to go and uh, hang out over there, you know, spend the weekend like we had done many times. And uh, so as but many people know, you know, when you're in a rural area living on a little house on the prairie like that, you know, there's not a lot, I mean, I'm not to say there's a lot to do, there's plenty to do, but you got to make your own fun hiking, camping, you know, walking through the hills and checking out the wildlife. It's not man-made fun. This is fun you make yourself, you know. So we had a Jeep. That's what we had taken the vehicle we had taken over there this weekend to hang out. We were in a Jeep. It was me, my father, and a friend of mine, about the same age as me, somewhere around there, 14, 15. Uh, his name was Scott. Shout out to Scott if you see this out there. <laughs> Good friend of mine. Um... So me and my friend Scott and my father, we're all, we, we, we decided to four-wheel this Jeep up to the top of this mountain, you know, and we're all hanging out at the top of the mountain by the cliff's edge, hanging out, you know, having fun. I was looking for arrowheads because there used to be a lot of Indian ruins in that area. And my dad and my friend, you know, they're over there having fun, throwing rocks off the edge of the cliff. They roll a couple boulders off, you know, rolling rocks off the cliff. And it's a very rural area. Remember, it's not hurting anyone or hurting anything. So we're over there. I'm about 50 yards from the cliff's edge. My father and my friend are right by the cliff's edge. They're pushing rocks over, you know, having fun rolling. Well, I mean, the Jeep is right by them, you know. All of a sudden, I, I start hearing a diesel, you know, diesel engine. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, what, where am I hearing this diesel from? Here we are in the real middle of nowhere, rural, where there's no possible way a diesel can get up the mountain, you know. I feel like sort of a shaking, a rumbling. Well, this diesel, why is there a diesel and a, and a shaking rumbling? What am, I, what am I hearing? What's going on here? You know, 
Oh, is it a jet? An alien? What is going on here? <laughs> All of a sudden, I look over to my father and my friend. I start to see a, somewhat of a dark cloud around, behind, around them by the cliff. Before you know it, I start seeing my friend and my father. They're doing this. They're doing this stuff here. And before you know it, I got we got bees everywhere. You know, what had happened was they had rolled those rocks, a big one, rock off onto a big, I suppose, a, a huge um, Africanized beehive at the bottom of this mountain. And I don't know if anybody out there knows anything about African bees, but they're extremely aggressive. And, they, and so what they did is they, as a, as a swarm had went up, climbed the side of this mountain, all the way up over the edge cliff and attacked. Um, unfortunately, in that situation, you don't have time to check and make sure your family's okay, you know. It's um, every man for himself at that moment, you know. So me, being younger and full of adrenaline and scared, I darted. I run, top speed, I run from the edge of the cliff, we start running down the side of the mountain towards our house, which is about two miles through a heavily wooded area, forest, you know, there's branches and boulders and rocks, anyone who knows of canyon type areas, you know. I'm running top speed, I'm tripping, falling, branches are hitting me in the eye, cutting me, breaking on me, and I'm, and I'm being tailed by Africanized beasts, <laughs> you know. I mean, I can laugh now, this is a comedy, but at the time it was life-threatening and it was pretty scary, uh, especially knowing that my father and my friend are back, I had to leave them behind not knowing what happened because I have peeled out. So I'm running top speed as you can run, you know, I'm staying ahead of them, but I was stung a few times. I can hear them behind me, you know, I'm staying ahead of them, and I sort of lose them, and, you know, running, tripping, falling through all these rocks, I, I lose them. And I get to the house, you know, I run in, and I close up all the doors, and I can see a few bees kind of buzzing around outside, but nothing too bad. I, co I sort of lost the swarm, which, what is the first thing that comes to mind? They didn't come to me, and they weren't on me. They stopped and attacked my dad. You know, that's what I'm thinking. So, uh, I'm sitting there and I'm wondering, what do I do? Here I am in the wilderness, no type of gear. My father's up there possibly being attacked by Africanized bees as I have been stung a few times. What do I do? Do I go up? Do I uh, try to call for help? Remember the nearest, you know what I mean? Fire department or police department is 100 miles away. What do I do? All I did was pray. I stayed indoors. Call it what you will, but I figured, you know, there's no use in me going up and getting killed with them if they're not okay. Thank the Lord, though. About 45 minutes later, half hour later, rrr, here comes down my dad and my friend in the Jeep, you know. And they asked me, you know, they were laughing. They had been stung. They had both been stung a few times. But they had made it to the Jeep, got into the vehicle that we had went up in, and locked themselves in, and a few had gotten in, but not, not nothing too terrible. They were, and, and they had been followed down by a few bees, but I suppose after some time, they said of them, of them four-wheeling out, the bees kind of left them alone, went back down off the cliff so just something for you guys to laugh about you know something you for you something new for you guys is mine right there uh true story that happened attacked by bees attacked by africanized killer bees as you can see from that uh from that thumbnail there real experience that we laugh about um yeah so after a few stings we escaped the situation the bees went off the cliff and that so but always watch what you're doing in the wilderness you know you, you never you never know what the wild has to uh, bring to you I also have a lot more other experiences I want to talk about that happened going from a city boy in Salinas, California to uh, living rural outside of Albuquerque. A bunch of stuff happened, you know, a lot of experiences there. Uh, it was incredible. But we were spared our lives on that one. Those aggressive kill killer bees went back down to repair their hive, even my father and, and my friend. And they asked me too, why did you jump back in the Jeep? And I told them, man, the Jeep was towards towards the cliff where they came up you know I'm, I'm going the opposite way but in all reality i probably should have ran toward the jeep because that was the protection you know but you panic and, and anyone who's been in these kind of situations knows you don't really have much time to think you know but anyways so just something for you to laugh about i still laugh about it when i think about it a little memory something to think outside the box watch out for those bees out there in that wilderness because as everyone knows africanized bees are working their way into the country as they have more they spread and uh could be anything when you're out there though always be with somebody and uh watch yourself be, be aware of your surroundings whether it be in the wilderness or in the city watch your guys back something for you to laugh about all right you guys have a good one